welcome to the Tuesday, September the 6th, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. Committee members and staff can introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Unless anything, anybody has anything else to add at this point, we will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures. Uh, just a quick note. Do you have the back speaker that points to the back on? I just turned it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. We don't need that one on. All right. Um, so this is really just going to be for anybody who's watching via Orca Media because we don't have any remote attendees, either members or members of the public right now. Um, so... For anyone viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's design review committee meeting via the Zoom platform, either using the link shown here. You can type that right into your web browser and it should bring you right into the meeting and I'll, I'll let you in. Um, or you can call in using this phone number. And then once you call in, it'll ask for a meeting ID. So you can use this meeting ID and you'll be able to hear everything that's going on in tonight's meeting and ask questions, speak up if you need to. Um, if you're trying to log into the meeting and you can't seem to get in, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I'll be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, I think if, if somebody does log in via Zoom, just know turning on your video is optional. You don't have to do that. Um, and But we do ask that you stay muted um, except for, you know, all one of us will call on you to introduce yourself so we know what you're that, that you're in the right meeting. Um, and then um, when you get called on to talk, you can unmute then, but otherwise stay muted so that we don't have interference. Um, in the event, the public is unable to access this meeting and I'll find that out via my email, then the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I will hand the meeting back over to the chair. If everyone's had a chance to look at the agenda, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. And I second it. All in favor of the, the, the agenda, speak your name. Ben. Martha. And Steve. The agenda is approved. And without any further ado, once you're ready, Sandy, we'll have you come describe your additional features <laughs> on the application. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. feel free to pull the microphone a little closer. Um, at this point, I'm not even sure where the application is, but I know there for um, as we were uh, refining exactly how the boiler was fitting in with the plumbing in the building, we realized that it had to change its orientation and that it needed more height. So and a, a new hot water heater would not fit in the existing roof. So I've asked to change the shape of the boiler shed, which would just be bringing the rest of the roof up so the whole roof would be raised and um, also thank you in doing that we realized that the boiler uh, the pellet silo does not need to be on the side of the shed but rather it could be in the back so um, that is um, shown on the floor plates so we've got Things are a little bit out of the order from how I had submitted them. I can also show it on the screen. Okay. That would be helpful. Um, so there you go. So the pellet where we had gotten it per, uh, permitted before was next to the ex existing porch. The street, the street is off to the right of the building. The front, this is at the back of the building. So the front of the building is to the right as well. And so this just kind of um, shields the silo better from the street. And it also uh, actually makes it easier to use the access doors where the boiler is going to be. Um, so it, can you go to the side elevation? Yeah, so the, the pellet silo was blocking those access doors we made those a little bit larger. It's kind of immaterial, not much larger. So mm -hmm. what was previously approved was the silo kind of below the shed. 
and only half of the roof being raised. Andy, what will go in that space now? Um, a car parks and the cars park, some cars park in there. It's a um, really just paved area. Is it paved? Okay. Yeah, it's not a um, designated parking space. And you're raising the full boiler shed roof now, right? Right, if you go back to the, the drawing below that in the handout, so now the whole the we had we had the originally asked that the um, left side be left as is, which is about eighteen inches lower. The other thing that is um, noticeable is we were allowed to drop the silo down. So this silo is a good four feet lower than we had it before. which will also help um, mask it. Does, is there a pipe that goes underground or a table? It's there? actually about uh, a foot. It's at the bottom of that square, which is called the udder. Where the, sorry, if you go back down, Meredith. Oh, here? Yeah, at the bottom of that, it goes left into the building, enters the building, and then rises up to the boiler level. It's a vacuum tube and a um, pellet tube. So it runs right across the ground, basically, as it comes. Yeah, we would encase it in a something hard, some kind of pipe. I thought one of the reasons that you were raising the silo was because of the water, the, the pipe that you were. Yeah, and we realized that every component in the silo, in the udder, in the pipes, they're all water tight, waterproof so they actually can be below there's actually even a shut off gate inside the silo so that they would even further protect the you know uh, 10 tons of pellets inside from getting wet in a flood event yeah so and it's not going to float away it's bolted down and if there are any pellets in it, it would be quite heavy but um the uh, right where Meredith's hand is up a little bit higher now like even right uh, even a little bit lower than that that that's about where the flood level is is right right around the top of the bollards so um that it was really no problem to let the silo be below uh flood level anyways i'm not asking to drop it <laughs> but we are asking to move it to the back and we're asking permission to raise the rest of that roof up. Yeah. Yeah, you had approved a taller silo and then they came in and so they could drop it. I don't, that's not something I would send back to you guys because clearly it would be less noticeable if it's shorter. Yeah. Right. Um, but we have to review, we have to give them the same thing for moving the silo to the rear. Um, anyway, it's a different setback. And that was enough, significant enough to put it to you guys and raising the whole boiler shit. I mean, there's other stuff going on here too, anyway. So it made sense to bring all of it back to you guys. Yeah. Um, and again, how, how much are you anticipating right, raising the shed group? 18 inches. So it would have the exact same shape that it does now. It just would go up 18 inches. Originally, we were only asking to raise half of it, but. Um, but it's still lower than everything, everything else. Right? Yeah. It's still behind the main, the main building. Completely. Yeah. And it doesn't um, go up above the main building. Not, not at all. So on the right, on that drawing that's on the screen, mm -hmm. you can see the adjacent porch. The mm -hmm. porch is higher than the shed roof. Okay. And then that, that we're, the hand is now is the top of the mansard roof and the bottom of the mansard roof with a significant cornice is um, that one. Yeah, where the hand is now. So it, it's all well below the mass of the building. And this is the, this line back here is the rear curb addition. Yeah, what we call the low mansard roof. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's a one story building. Yeah. 
it's higher than the silo do yeah. now. Once I know what the next topic is, I'll scroll to it. Um, no, it's the windows, that, but yeah, maybe they will have some. Yeah, maybe they may have discussion about other parts. Anybody have any questions on the other portions of the silo and the shed? Okay. Good. Next on the uh, list is your windows. It is, and that's the biggest request for tonight. Um, so there are, um, how many windows? There's so many windows on this building. Um, I think you said you're replacing something like 37. We we're proposing to change out 37 of them, but those are the rectangular ones and ones in the back. Um, I think there are more than 60 windows in the whole building. Mm -hmm. Um, and they may be closer to 70 or 80. I, I have an inventory of them, but um, my papers got spread out, so I don't have them right now. But the, um, oh well. Uh, anyways, you can see on the elevations that the attempt is to make, uh, to, to only replace windows that are rectangular and in the back of the building. So, um, the truly character defining windows that have round tops um, and face the road and are visible from either angle as you approach the building, uh, they would be restored. And we have a contract already started to, we're in queue to get them restored. Okay. Over a, I think it'll be a three year plan, but um, uh, we're already doing that. And they all have um, interior storms already except for a couple on the back, but they, they, um, so the owner's making concentrated effort to, um, uh, give back to the community where they, they can really have an impact. The rectangular windows were able to replace, um, pretty much in kind the, we were suggesting using Ultrex for the outside, but it's a narrow profile. So it will look almost exactly like the original windows. Yeah. And they were one over one, so that's not an issue. Um, so I'm just talking first, because I think these are the most important windows on the front and the two public sides of the building, um, that they would, th those are the only ones that would be replaced. The R's on. With an R on them. So all of the, the, the first level are segmental arches and the upper ones are actually semi-circles, semi-arch semi uh, windows, those would all be restored. Um, at the back of the window, those are basically impossible to see from the public realm. Um, the, the side over the right, but yep, but next to the, you, now you can hear, really get a sense of how small the boiler shed is compared to the building. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, those back windows you can't even see from School Street because uh, the church blocks them, and um, uh, there are in that view there four of them are rectangular, two are angle top windows, and I have a picture of what they look like from the inside. Those two are angle tops right now and we're proposing that they be exchanged out for rectangular windows. So your packet does have a photo from the inside of one of what these yeah. angle tops are. There's let's see one, two there are two there. One and, two on the rear and then two or three on the three on that side. Yeah. So it's a total of six yeah six are angle top now but the rest are all rectangular. Um and the picture that you're looking for. So 
This one is the second floor window. Yeah, that one. And it gives you an idea of how bad the shape, the condition is of the windows. Um, so that's on the inside. What that looks like. Yeah. Oh, you can't even see the hole in the window. The glass, the glass has a hole this big in it. So, um, the idea is so that most of those storms already, sorry, most of those windows have outside storms which are already rectangular topped. They've mm -hmm. been that way for probably 40 years. And the idea would be just to get, take the storms off and, and then just fill in discreetly following the example of the one that was always built as a rectangular back on the, can you go back to the um, west side, Meredith? Yep, where the porch is. So that window right there was, is a bathroom window in it was always a rectangular window. Like from the inside, it's a flat dormer ceiling. Mm -hmm. And it's clear if you look carefully at the outside that it was always a rectangular window. So we would copy that one around the back of the building um, and just fill in the triangle uh, with, with the rectangles. Again, you can't see it from School Street. Um, on the back is the river. And then um, on the east side of the building is a big tree. So you just you can't see them okay. from anywhere. Fill in the rectangle with what? A wood trim to wood, look like the wood panel. Wood. Yeah, a wood pan. Thank you, a panel to you look like. Leave that. it recessed when you replace the other window against the stops. You could even put yep. a wood panel against the stops where the glass was, and then insulate it on the interior. Oh yeah, the the <clears throat> bathroom one that is existing has a horizontal piece of black trim that matches the two coming down and so and then the the trying it's the tip of right yes yeah so that's that picture the tympanum is yeah. painted green it's not the same you can yeah. see the recess you can just there. see the, the the small corner of yeah. the recessed panel yeah yeah and that's what we're planning to yeah. do so this we're all on the same page there <clears throat> um but it's just prohibitively expensive to replace them with ingle top pieces and um, those windows need to be operable. They shouldn't just be fixed. So for a lot of reasons, it made sense to, to try to replace them. Um, if I could go on, if you go to the back, um, do you mind going scrolling down, Meredith? Yep, I'm just going to stop share for a second so yep. I can scroll a little faster. And I'll share again. Which page do you want it to was go to? You were on it, actually. Oh, sorry. I thought you went to another page. <laughs> it's all right. Let me go back. It would give people vertigo if you scroll too quickly. So if you go down just a little to the next row of drawings, there's the back of the building. And see on the third floor, there are the three R's on windows. And the far right one is a tiny door. So um, those windows, both the historic preservation consultant and I believe, are not original to the building. We actually don't even think those dormers are original to the building. Um, I'm trying to figure out, we, we don't know where they came from, but you can see in this picture that they are um, very random. And one of them has muntins in it. it. It seemed like they used salvage when they made those windows. They are crazy inefficient, like just shaking. Yeah. Um, one doesn't even have a storm. Uh, basically, they have socks trying to um, shim them, hold them tight. Uh, and then the far right hand on the third floor is a door that is very small. It's like two feet by six foot something. And um, we're able to replace it uh, with a single. It has it's two lights wide and five high, but we, we could replace it with just a single light. That seemed to be better. It, it's not, again, we don't think it's original. None of the hardware on the door matches the rest of the hardware in the building. Was the door meant to be an egress? Um, it, it's, it, it can't be an egress because it's only two feet wide by, I mean, it, it would count as an egress window, but not an egress door. Is there an egress from the third floor, additional? Well, that's why we the whole um, sprinkler issue is uh, in a separate department right now. 
the, basically the building cannot get a fire escape. So there's no way to do it. So, um, it's, so I, suffice it to say, it's not an egress door, but the idea is to improve it so it actually is airtight and can continue to be used. It's used now as there's a little roof deck up there that's not shown that um, the tenant has access to. I didn't know if rather than do a one over one double hung, if you could do like a casement window that would still allow oh it's actually a door oh, with okay. hinges and doorknob yeah it's two feet wide and six foot something now tall you replace, you're going to replace that with a window no replace it with another door with another we're okay. able to yeah we just got a custom door ordered oh, okay. <clears throat> um so it's uh so that was the door referred to as the 31 37 windows plus one door yeah. Okay. And the and the I'm just trying to figure out exactly what the size. It's a tiny kind of door. Does the replacement door have glass in it? Yeah, it would be a single light door. Full, basically full glass, okay. single light. Kind of in keeping with the rest of the windows up there, that would be one over ones. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't have a better picture of it, but it is that hard to find. Like, like you, you can't, you can't get to it. So okay. You can't see it from the ground. I'm trying to see if, hold on one second. Well, if you go back up, you see can the see the, the balcony. Oh, yep. And that's where the door is, but you can see how it's basically impossible to see it. And that balcony doesn't go to the set of stairs. No, it doesn't. It's just a deck. It's not an egress. Well, that's Audra had put in when we were looking at the chimneys as we further up. Do you want to Audra had put in a Google v street view from Cliff Street. Cliff Street. And I'm wondering if we could. Yeah, you can. I can see it. I can see it. It's on the right there. That's bad. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's 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 the kind of view you get from Constitute. It's the only place I think you can see it. Right. <laughs> or from maybe a rooftop over here, yep. and they have solar panels. Yes. Uh, and then it's important to zoom out because you're not. Your view isn't focused on that one object. Right. You're looking at the whole landscape, yep. Yep. cityscape. So, um, yeah, the, 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 actually, the ladder is up. Do you see the ladder? That's the yes. only way to get up there. So, um, I'm happy to answer any questions about those windows. One of your diagrams here shows windows in the porch area. Are you anticipating changing those now? Um, do you mind going back to the elevations of the building? I think they're the most mm -hmm. useful. Anything with an R on it, we're asking for permission to replace. Yeah. So, those, okay. so those side porch yep. windows? That's what I'm talking yep, about. Yep, those are they. That's what I'm talking yep. about. Yep, that's on the first floor in the back of the building. And those are yes. ones that are already rectangles yep. that are just going to be switched they're out. They're Better rectangles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of them looks like it is uh, shaped. That mm -hmm. one has a modern out st exterior storm on it, and what you're seeing is the the much later applied exterior storm. The window itself is rectangular. I have yes. no idea why they put that exterior storm on. Maybe they had it from a different window. It's really bizarre. And there are no other um, storms that look like that on the building. There was probably one it, kicking around in the basement from it, somewhere else and it, it just honestly, used whatever. It doesn't fit. It doesn't yep. work. It doesn't close. It's not. It just used whatever they could find at the moment. <laughs> yeah. It's, 
not functional. I see on your window descriptions here that at the bottom it says a nailing fin, which indicates to me that it's being put in from the exterior. Yeah, I would have to refer to the contractor who's doing this, but I think they're going to be ripping off the nailing fins so that they can get a full tight fit up against and then sealing because they and couldn't get the fins on. Uh, they didn't want to... They could were, be the description because they make the window without a nailing fin. So well, I asked if we could order it without it, and I was told you just break them off. Oh, but, okay. Um, because evidently these come only with a fin on. But oh, okay. the, um, the um, we won. I I was trying to avoid the glass size being reduced. Yep. It was very important to try to keep the glass size the size the same. So they're actually taking out. They're not taking out all of the jams, but they're going right to them. And then this is a replacement unit, so it has pretty thin. So it's not it's not changing the glass size. Yeah, they only gave you like a quarter of an inch That's right. <laughs> in dimension because they want an eighth of an inch on all size, depending on how square the opening is. That's right. And you have to just hope for squareness. And um, we've actually measured each opening like three times to make sure that things will fit. But I think I think that I can report that accurately. That there won't not be, intending to use the nail fin. They, that there's no place to yep. for it to go in. Right. When I, that just made me nervous when I saw it. Without that. the fins, they basically just insert from the inside out to the yeah. exterior casing. And you actually take the bash out and you screw through the jam. As far as I understand it. Right. You take the window sash out and screw through the jam, and then you. Yeah. Because the old original Cockpit. windows with the sash would mount up against the actual exterior casing. Yep. Right. So with these, you just strip everything off on the inside, and then this window as a unit goes up against that casing. Right. <clears throat> yep. As long as you don't have nail fins in the way. Correct. Yep. Sandy, yeah, this is the front of the building, correct? The upper right hand, yes. Yeah. And you're anticipating replacing those second floor windows? Yep, only the rectangles on okay. facing the street. And the second floor. So the bottom windows have a very shallow segmental arch and the top windows are actually a, a semicircle at the top. And all of those will be, we're, we're, the owner is willing to restore. It's really pricey to get the arched windows. <laughs> They're very expensive and they're definitely character. I mean, it would be harder to get them. You can't get them as an insert, a replacement, you know, with a thinner, it would just be, um, probably be not looking the same. Well, they come with a fixed upper sash, so you can get them, but they're super expensive. <laughs> and it's nice to keep as many restored as you can. And this restoring will include fixing the weights, which um, are broken on at least two thirds of the windows. Well, you and want to get rid of that weight because you want to insulate that space. That's a, yeah, that's a question. But um, uh, there are a lot of windows with cracks. There are a lot of windows with the, with the interior storms aren't on or they're not fitting. So all of that's being fixed. Okay. Chimneys? There's one more small item first. Chimney and roof. So this Application, the question of a possible conversion doesn't go before DRC to the apartment. This is on the- Right. Is this, yeah, the apartment doesn't- Right, the, but the only thing that is, is this idea of adding one exhaust fan. Oh, mm. yeah. yeah. So I just need to bring it up because um, it's in the, in the request. Yep. So we were, were proposing adding one exhaust fan to that um, east side of the building. And I, I- there's a page with it, and then I have a cut sheet. Yeah, 
just after the whole window session. So there's like an event would go. I'm gonna back out a little bit. Right there. Yep. There's and I and I submitted a cut sheet as yep. well. It's just a standard orange, black black event. That would just go right there. It's as high as up as I could get it without getting it into the trim. Um, it seemed to me the best compromise on the outside of the building. It could go right up against the, the um, soffit, but then it would be disturbing the brickwork, which seems to me an important defining character. So I, I'm suggesting dropping it down a little bit to where the hand is on the trolley. Mm -hmm. And this is on the side headed uh, north, right? Um, it's okay. what we're calling the east side. It's where the right below this arrow is where the meters are. Mm. Um, so uh, this is a great picture. This one that I had given earlier for the windows. It's way up there. Yeah. Where we had originally talked about get, putting the um, condenser here on the wall. Mm -hmm. And the meters, you can't see behind the bay, but it's just up there. And this is not certain, but we're trying to pave the way in case it does happen. That we don't, I, I'm trying not to come back multiple times, although this is my third visit. Do you think you have any? right left adjustment in that so that it might be more centered between the yeah the, the brace yeah. and the wall it's like it's really a question of where it is in the the joists and yeah uh maybe we have to lower that ceiling in there yeah but um you could kind of hate to because then it will have to have another sprinkler but We'll see. Um, is that if that's important? We definitely encourage you. To I do. trust you to do the right thing. It's yeah. more just a. Is there a? No, as much as you can think about it, tuck it into that band. So <laughs> try to make it go towards the bay window. I think so. Okay, that's fair. Any other questions on the vent? The last item totally got me set by surprise. It is extremely hard to get up to the high roof. And I went up um, very bravely, I thought. Um, <laughs> I thought I was going to die. And I went up and I saw that A, the roof is in terrible condition. And there were a whole lot more vents. And there are actually two pipe vents that I don't even know what they go to that are extremely old. Um, so there are a lot of these, these penetrations that um, from an energy retrofit point of view are a nightmare uh, because they let cold air down, there are avenues for water. Um, it, you just, you can't insulate your, your envelope. Uh, of these, so, I'm not talking about the one that's on the lower, the middle roof. I wrote lower roof. It's there's a, a one that is more dominant down there. You can see it if you look at the like the Google image in your packet. Yeah, um, and it the, captures it kind of. It's also I think visible from the some of the ground photos from the rear. Yeah. In this photo, you can see the one that I'm talking about. Is, I'm not discussing this one up here is one of the things that we're hoping to take down. So of the four that are on the high roof, so the high roof is different from the other two roofs. They are um, shallow sloped and they're already covered with TPO. The high roof is um, uh, crushed stone on asphalt and it goes to a separate drain. Like it's typical right there. And um, there are these four, and I would say of them, the, the top one on this sheet um, labeled uh, 
recent propane chimney is recent. The bricks do not match. The mortar does not match. Um, and um, we are hoping to remove that propane hot water heater and take up a propane off the building. So that chimney will very quickly become archaic and it's not historic. It's in my mind is not even contributing. It's actually a negative up there. Um, then right below it is the large rectangular chimney, which is in, in poor condition. Um, and uh, it doesn't have a cap or anything. And then the other two that are closer to the tower, that one and the one at the bottom left, are in good condition. But our thought is to take all four off uh, simply to clean up the roof and to be able to insulate it. So the only way to insulate that roof is through a hatch, which I don't show on the drawing, but it's right. You can where see you it in the picture that yeah. I provided. So you've got one right there. The hatch, on the desk, Martha. And mm -hmm. when you go in, it's really not more than like, it's like 28 inches high at the perimeter and goes down to eight inches in the middle. It's a pretty unpleasant space to be in. And um, we have to stuff it full with cellulose. It's really the best way to deal with it. And um, at that point, it's a real liability if water leaks down into it from the, from the roof. And um, at this point, I think the owner is talking about replacing the roof in kind. There's a small possibility he will change the material to TPO, but- um, What is the TPO? Uh, it's, I knew it is Teflon polyophilin. It's now called thermoplastic polyophilin. And um, it looks like that. Thank you, Meredith. You're, you're amazing. Right there up on the screen. Yes. Does that last longer than the 60 mil membranes? Well, this has, this one might be 60 mil. It, this one has, at least used to have a 70 year warranty for commercial buildings. 70? Yeah. Wow. So, um, it would be, it's what I usually recommend. I've done it on residential buildings. There's no warranty on residential, by the way, but it's still the same product, still the same installation. But um, it's a good roof and it's more walkable than the stone on asphalt, which is a real problem. So, uh, however the roof goes, that's not part of this application tonight to change that material. Um, but um, the owner would really like to get some guidance on the chimneys because right now that that roof, that attic is scheduled for insulation in early October. And um, we've got to, we've got to move on it. It's getting cold. It's coming. So, um, the way I feel about it is I really looked hard um, walking from the library towards 138, towards the roundabout. You can only see one or two on the west side, the ones that are in good condition, mm -hmm. for not more than really like 30 feet. It's, there's a very small space on the sidewalk. I made a duck diagram where you could, you know. Walking in the other direction, you can see the, um, yeah, I did that, that chart. Yep. Um, and then so walking in the other direction from the roundabout towards this down street, you can see the um, propane chimney for a lot longer than you can see that. The, the big chimney that's hidden in the middle. Uh, but that is relatively, I, I don't know, I think I wrote there. Yeah. So four to three, you can see chimneys, and one to two, you can see chimneys, right? Correct. Yeah, four to three and one to three. Those are little spans from, the, I, from the main street. Where right I did that was the, really the extreme. You can see it's just appearing now beyond the medical building, and then in position number two, it's disappearing. And then the same thing with um, they're disappearing at position four, and um, then they're disappearing at position three. So, from all the photos here, 
you can barely see them even and rear. even from the rear with I, all the rest of the detail in the building i would not call the chimneys a character defining feature and i have to say i've been working on the building since june and i didn't even know they were up there i was completely shocked when they went up there they they aren't mentioned in the historic register listing just in, they, they aren't part of the description of the building so in terms of anything that's no longer being used obviously because of of technology and newer heating systems anything that's not being used is not a character defining feature i don't have any problem with it going away yeah, none of them are used no. does anybody else on the committee have any issues or suggestions regarding the chimneys the fewer penetrations in the roof of the building, the better off for Certainly. a sustainable roof and also for purposes of, of insulating. <clears throat> would they put rigid on top of the, when they do the yeah, new roof, would they Vince use rigid on top or just? Go on. Vince hasn't had anyone up there. They, we're, we're going to be averaging uh, between eight and 28. So let's say an average what's it, 2010, 18 inches of, we're gonna do two inches of foam and then fill the rest with cellulose. So I think there's a pretty decent R value up there. I mean, it certainly would be a great idea to add a couple inches more on the top to have continuous insulation, um, but no one's even discussed that yet. I should write down a note. Well, two inches of rigid on top of the roof sheathing yeah. uh and then the membrane or whatever the tpo on top of that uh yeah that's all we've ever done yeah i'm gonna write it down and then below that you can just cram that full of dense pack yep yep and by eliminating any void we don't have to have a sprinkler up there um but as i said before it becomes a real liability if if it does leak that would be one huge mass of wet heavy wet was. blanket really scary in terms of weight damage to the building and then trying to get it out like how do you get that out i, I do have a question from one of meredith's pictures here um looking at, there's a chimney but what is this thing right here I don't know if I could show it any better. I think that that's the tower. Yeah, that's the, I think that's the tower. So that's the front. Let me scroll back. If you look at the front of the building, you see the tower up there. So that is, that's this chimney and that's the tower in the front. Okay, that's part of the building. Yep, yes. that's yep. going in. Okay, no chimneys <clears throat> are suggested for that. Yep. So you can't even get into that. But don't be if they put two inches of rigid on the top, they actually can do a, a seam seal between the sheets, which mm -hmm. will further eliminate any potential leaking. That's very helpful. I can <laughs> hold my head up high when we meet with the roofing contractor. <laughs> I'll mention that. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. It's just an extra backup. Yeah. <laughs> any other questions regarding any of these components that are being proposed? Comments, questions, suggestions from anyone? Steve, I don't want to be accused of surprising anyone. So we had an issue happen today on the job site that I do need to know if are you about. I can do that afterwards or I can do it now, whichever you prefer. It's, it's kind of a big deal. Okay. Um, the airlock, none of us noted after three different visits and various measurements that the slab, the granite slab has shifted out of plumb. So it's not level, it's off by an inch. And the door design, because it's seasonal, the door, there's no threshold to level things off. So if you think about it, there's two sot panels coming down on either side of the door and there's no way to get them level because- Is there any way to re-level the slab? 
<laughs> I don't really know. No. I mean, they're okay. massive. That's an eight foot by eight foot by probably four to eight inches deep of, and the walls are. I mean, no, and then everything else around it is is in place. What's what's supporting it from underneath? It has its own foundation of granite. So, so um, there's a whole inch difference between the two panels that are on either side of the door. And they went through over and over about what they could do. And the best thing they can do is to drill additional holes down and then add a piece under the, the, the one that's higher up so to get it to level and, and or caulk it. And um, Alex Tolstoy is an historic preservation consultant. He used to be with Vermont Preservation Trust for many years. Mm -hmm. He worked with Eric and um, he just looked at me and he said, this shouldn't be removable. This should not be a seasonal airlock. And after I sat here and talked about the seasonality of it, I feel kind of sick to bring this up, but it's a really big issue and we can do it and still make it removable, but there will be more scars on the floor and when it gets removed every spring, two things have to happen is there's gonna be more stuff on the floor, more holes in the floor probably. And then when it goes back, then it has to be probably recalked every year and um, to, to get it to be stable. Cause the door- Can inch, they not use a compressible foam if it's only an inch of compressible foam underneath to they, seal it? They went through their whole vocabulary of how they could solve it. And um, Alex actually uh, whipped off this letter. This can be tabled for a couple of weeks. I told them that they may not be able to install it on schedule because um, I had to talk to you about it tonight. And there's not a quick solution that we can wait. But I, I just would feel really wrong to let you finish the agenda items and not mention this at all. So the outer portion of the slab has lifted up an inch. So the foundation that's under it, the frost has gotten underneath and lifted it. So you could have to drop it back down. <laughs> as opposed to, does it move seasonally up and down? <clears throat> There's no set, there's no, there's no, nothing visible about it moving and it's absorbed it in the roof. So it's why, I mean, they had lasers on this back in June. So I, I'm just not sure why we found it out today. The good news is we found it out today before it actually went in. But I, I just, because I've talked to you about it being removable, I don't, didn't feel comfortable not bringing this to your attention. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm meeting with them tonight. You know, he's mentioned this. Um, I, I don't need to bring it to you as an emergency that needs a decision tonight. I just wanted to notify you about it. And um, again, we can put off installing it and wait till the right decision is found. But um, the pieces are all fabricated for it to be removable. So I don't know what to do. I mean, we have to amend that permit. That would yeah. be an amendment to come back for an official. And I mean, it's in there, in the record. It's and it's having that as a condition that it's removable and it's only up during certain months of the year. And I you know that was an important part of our discussion. Right. Too. I don't feel comfortable making any decision at all today. On that one. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable asking you to. Sounds like I don't know when the next deadline is, but I should just submit this as a formal request for reconsideration that's yeah I mean, that's, is that that's going to have to be an, an amendment to the permit that has to come through the drc because that's not something i can is that okay with the group if i sure. submit that yeah would it be a request for reconsideration so take a look at it if that permit. moves if that slab moves seasonally because we've had an issue with a 
with a, a porch that's moved seasonally, even though we, the last time we put sauna tubes down six and a half feet in the ground, the darn thing still moves three quarters of an inch up and down. Don't ask me why. I've seen porches move a foot in Vermont, in central Vermont. Well, this one just moves about three quarters of an inch up and down seasonally, even though they've been replaced the third time, mm -hmm. six, six and a half feet down and the frost seems to like to grab it somehow and move it. So we actually have a, uh, in, inside because there's a doorway that it affects more than anything. And we've actually have a uh, foam that can handle the, the expansion mm -hmm. and contraction. Right, because if you can, if they install it permanently and it just keeps shifting, it's going to well, have gaps or no gaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. So if it does move, you want to have an installation that can handle that, that change over a season. Right. I missed this meeting, um, but I feel like there's scenarios where there are, you can make a panel and then it has more of like an inner tube around the goes around the outside of it that you can then fill with air that would then push against all sort of irregular surfaces. And if they were to move. Inner tube. Yeah, sort of like a gasket that goes around the perimeter of a, you know, a door, a rectangle that fits into an opening. Same, same effect as the foam, but it it gives you more shift space. It's not Basically, just one if you think about the foam insulation that you put around piping, yeah, it's it's round, and if you crush it, yeah, and then release it, it comes back to its original shape. I think yeah. the problem so, is the hinge on the door. Sorry, it's actually hinging outside, but the hinge right now is an inch off the ground. Mm. So that most I see, the I see. corner of the airlock is an inch off the porch floor. Why don't I just bring it back next week and I can take, so I can't they, take pictures. If they hand you, if the door is an inch off the floor, you could have some kind of a floating. Well, they were talking about adding another pin there. Okay. And the consultant is worried about having additional holes in the brand up. You don't want too many holes to create a crack. Right. And then the one that is going in happens to be uphill now, but it's, you know, a sizable distance away from where traffic is going in and out possibly with yeah. salt on their feet. Whereas this one is right where, you know, very close to where people would be walking. And he just was looking at it. He's like, no, this is not good. So I don't know what to do. So I'll bring it back in two okay. weeks. Everyone can think about it. Okay. <laughs> well, and also go back, go back to the go back to the consultant with the idea of something under there that's yep. somehow, you know, it compressible. Has to take, it has yeah. to take significant stress from the door opening and shutting. It's you know, it's gonna be a lot of yeah. It can horizontal. Actually create something that floats on top of a movable in insulation or foam or something that can take that a little bit of movement. <laughs> Maybe a stainless steel bolt. I don't know. Okay. All right. I will go back to the drawing board okay. on that. And, and I'll submit it by the deadline, the request for request for amendment. Is that right, Mary? Yep. Okay. It's, a, it's a request for an amendment to that existing permit for that. Okay. This, this other, other than the... Uh, other than that issue, does anybody have any questions, comments, suggestions on the rest? Otherwise, I'll go through the criteria. <clears throat> Excuse me. For all projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided 
character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize a historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced where possible. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character defining feature, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. The proposal for windows and other parts of the structure are acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing an overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. Actually, the moving of the silo further back is an improvement. Rhythm, the visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls or and openings, windows and doors in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible, acceptable. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes and immediate area. Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from my level of view from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to, to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns Placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features acceptable. End of criteria. All in favor of the application as proposed, speak your names. Ben. Um, I say yes in terms of the boiler shed and the pellet silo and the vent, the bathroom vent. I, I say no on the windows. Um, I'm okay. I say yes in terms of the chimneys, the removal of the chimneys. They were not original, so it's no problem to remove those. With the windows? With, no, the, the chimneys. So you're you're saying no on all of the windows? I'm saying no on the win the windows that are slanted. The okay. windows that are. So the, the angle tops. Correct. So you don't want to replace the angle top with the rectangular. Correct. Okay. So that I think gives there us so only two. I think well, it's two for everything else. So technically I could approve the other stuff, but not the replacement of the angle top windows. So you'd have the opportunity to appeal the denial of the angle top windows to the DRB. Thank you. 
Is there a scenario where you can replace the window and then just leave the, just restore that piece of glass, the triangular piece of glass at the top of the window? It's so than... small. I, I'm not sure how, I mean, I think what will happen is that if we can separate it, the other ones need to be done this winter and there'll just be massive holes in the other windows. <laughs> I, not sure what else we can do. Rather than put a panel on, there's one. Do you have literally this large a hole in that window, and it, cold air comes right in and out? I'm not sure. Well, no. Rather, when you remove the glass and put a rectangular window in, instead of putting a panel in that space, what if you got Portland can make a insulated glass, double or triple piece of insulated glass? Instead of a plywood panel with insulation, you could take a double, a, a small triangular window. They can make several of those. I've had to make those before. Yeah. They can make, do a double insulated or a triple insulated glass panel that you put in and put a stop around. So now you have glass in that opening. I mean, literally, you're talking about a piece of glass that's this big. Yes, I know. I, I think we'll appeal it to okay. DRB. With all respect. Yep. No, that's fine. I'm just throwing it out as an option. It's a, it's a valuable option. Thank you. I appreciate you trying to help solve that problem. So what do I do? Write down vote three to nothing in favor of all items with the exception of the angle top windows? So what I did was I just said the vote was three to nothing in favor of all items with the exception of several angled window re angle top window replacements. And I just said a member does not approve the replacement of the several angle top windows with rectangular replacements. Yep. And so I can okay. get you to well if she yeah, no, she's not gonna sign it because she's gonna feel it. She's gonna feel it. Okay. Yeah, I mean okay. documents. If the fence was open to the glass in the top, would it need to would it need to come back, or would you be okay with the top being replaced with glass triangle panel? I would be okay with that. Okay. Maybe just for events, because I mean, I feel through the DRB, I've got to double check to see if that would go to on the same meeting as the October chimneys. 30th. Or if I have to wait till the last. Year. Would you be willing to read to me what I would be signing? What it what goes along with the signature? Uh, if you sign on this, then you're okay with not replacing the angle top windows right now. I I am. Well, as in leave. Right. The, what, that ends this. Read, then that, I issue the permit for everything, can, but you don't need to read what my signature line says. It just says signature back. There's nothing else on. It just means you agree with what this says, and you're not going to replace the angle top window. Even right if I do agree with what that says, including Martha's exception, why can't I sign that? Because that says you're not going to appeal what's been said. How, how many angle yes. top windows are there? There Three. are um, six. 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 So can't you parse out that one section? 
pretty important that we start. Wait, um, great. This can we can we talk about this tomorrow when I can talk to Audra to see how we can yep. do that? Yeah, I'd I be happy to sign this. Actual whenever. physical permit software. Usually we only have people sign this if they're not appealing part of it. So if you can actually make it into the office tomorrow, I won't be in until probably noon because I have doctor's appointments in the morning. Yeah. Then I'll have my people who can because I just I haven't had this situation. What, come up when before. is the next DRB? Applicant. You can't make it to the next DRB meeting. Uh, sorry, and when is the next DRC? Wait, I don't have that right in front of me. For the, just, can we just talk tomorrow? <laughs> sure, because okay. what I want to suggest is that I withdraw the angle top windows from this application, and it could be part of a, of a next one. And then it, uh, if it goes through DRB in the middle of October, but what I'm just trying to do is make it simpler for you to issue a permit for everything okay. else. Yep. If you want to withdraw that, just then that's with, fine. Just if you then, could know that applicant will withdraw the angled window, withdrew the angled windows from consideration on that this permit, would that work? And we can wait yeah. till tomorrow if you want to talk to Audra. But well, no, because they would have to sign off on, okay. on that. Um, if you withdraw that, um, does that make sense, to Steve? Does that make sense to you? Then if we still end up with the same place, and you still appeal, but then we'll like be on the D we have to go. We'll be late on the DRB. I, I'm guessing that we're not going to be able to go to the DRB until October 17th, regardless. Um, not necessarily. I just don't have the dates yeah. in front of me right now. <laughs> you will just wait because I can't remember what the actual deadline this, is. But Audrey, if it was if the deadline was this past Friday, Audrey was supposed to send out the public notices today, and I did not see those. So it might be that this Friday is the deadline for DRB, but if you withdraw from this application, I don't know if I can send you to the DRB as an appeal from a withdrawn if, item. You know That's what? I have a better it's a technical about, thing. I, I think we should just not rush it. It's the same thing as with the airlock. Let's let it go. Not, not rush speed. for those particular windows because you can do all the others. I'd rather be able to move everything else okay. forward. I think it's just calmer that way. Yeah. If I if we just agree that those angle top windows are withdrawn from this application, so that you by, have to come by back. By not to making the small piece of glass to fit in instead of a panel, yeah. is it that just for cost or for aesthetics or? Um, I can't even begin to understand what that cost would be. It would be really big, but I don't think the cost. It, I, I think it's just a complication to have be trained to to put two through two scenarios, so. In my mind, it's easier just to take them off of this application and let the known universally accepted items keep going on. I know I'm coming back in two weeks to say hi to you because of the airlock. Yeah. So they could go on the airlock application. Um, so here's a better idea, maybe. And then if, in the meantime, I could look at that price. If they're willing to approve it with the triangle glass top, instead of saying right. that's what you'll agree to, if you want to change that, if that ends up being priced too much, then you come back with that in two weeks. If it works, then you don't have to come back. I can tell you but, that I had a probably about a 28 inch half round window that had been single pane and we made a new frame, we had a new frame made by a custom uh, house in Portland glass made an insulated Half round window, twenty eight inches or half round, and it cost me one hundred and forty dollars. So, what I'm hearing is that it might be better to accept the amend the change to putting a glass fixed glass panel in above those six windows, and that if that's not acceptable to the builder or to the owner, I could put that change in without change huge in. animus Good, yes. could put that in with the airlock, a different scenario. Uh, yeah. Well, you wouldn't have to come. You wouldn't have to come. If, if you're okay accepting that as an approval if it, if window if change, because it's either that or a denial. If it's unacceptable, that right. That's yes. why I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's unacceptable, it's cleaner just to take, take it off this list and let it be lagged two or four weeks behind the If that's the acceptable items. to the builder and to the owner. Yeah. But you can have six of those made up. What, what I'm thinking is 
why don't we just take it off completely tonight? I, I would feel better about that. I understand what Sandy's saying. It's yeah. just taking okay. it off and it's then just letting cleaner to be able to go forward with everything else. Yeah. But you wouldn't be able to go forward with everything else because we would right. issue the permit. No, it tomorrow. won't go forward. It will go forward separately. Yeah, yeah. that's what I need on its own I, calendar. That's what I need. Yeah. Is that if you take that piece out of your application, then you can go forward with everything else that's on the application. And then I think so your idea now, is just to take the six okay. windows out altogether. I'm sorry, Meredith. <laughs> nope, I, I will just say that uh, applicant withdrew to the six angle top window replacement. Feels like there's going to be a lot of amendments to this application. Well, I have to come again because of the airlock. So I, I will be here at, your, at the next opportunity possible. Um, it was too good to be true to think this would be the last visit. <laughs> I thought you liked coming to us. I do like to see you folks. Thank you, Mary. When I just said applicant accepts withdrawal of the six angle top windows from the application. Okay. And then I can get rid of this because we're voting three and nothing in favor with, with that recommendation. Yep. All right. Uh, so now, if you can sign that, we can issue that permit. And then, yeah, we need to get out of the room because we've got to gear up for the meeting. You have time to do a quick review and approve August 1st minutes if you guys have had a chance to look at them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sandy. Good night, everybody. Any comments, questions, or changes to the minutes? No, they look good to me. Do you hear a motion to approve? Second. I will second. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Steve. Minutes are approved. And I already took attendance. Next meeting, September 19th. We hear a motion to adjourn. I so move. I second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your name. Ben. Martha. Steve. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.